Welcome to Brookville Area High School, courtesy Raiders Sports in conjunction with YDL Sports. I'm here live from Brookville Area High School as the boys varsity basketball team, Brookville will take on Elk County Catholic Crusaders. I'm joined here by Owen the Chicken Weaver. How we doing, Owen? Good. So, you know, I was thinking earlier today about the broadcast, and I said, if you, when you think of NFL franchises, to me anyway, I think Steelers, Cowboys. When I think NBA, I think Boston Celtics, LA Lakers, NHL, Montreal Canadiens, maybe New York Islanders. Mm -hmm. Baseball, unfortunately, the Yankees. Yeah. And when I think District 9 basketball, who's the first to come to mind, though? Elk County Christian. Elk uh, County Catholic. Catholic. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Not don't Christian. say Christian. Yeah, that's those are, fight, those are fighting words. Catholic. Yeah, Catholic. My bad. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll fight you. <laughs> you won't get a ham dinner if you don't say it right. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's, that's the one thing you can always – count on that head coach Aaron Straub who I think is coming into year number 74 now I Aaron you know I, I love you like a brother so I'm not going to be that mean but he's been doing it quite a few years and um, you can assure yourself that he will know your strengths he will hide his strengths he will know your weaknesses and exploit those and uh, you are going to have your hands full with regardless, you know, regardless of how much talent he has on the floor. So um, Matt Wrights and company have their hands uh, hands full tonight as far as uh, an Elk County team coming in. They're, what do you see, what do you hear in their, their year? Oh, what are they? They're three and oh coming in this game. And Brookville's one and three. Brookville one and three. Um, obviously they, they get off to a win in, in the opening tip off the, the uh, semis, they, they face Warren in the finals and I think that was a little bit of a wake-up call for uh, for the Brookville team where Warren had three really nice guards, very quick, could move the basketball, mm -hmm. um, something that you're not going to see night in, night out. And then they went on the road. They dropped another one to Oil City. Um, and then talking to some folks, they, they dropped a, a heartbreaker to the Shannick uh, by three last Friday, I believe. Yeah. Um, so... And in, in talking to people, had they played uh, in the Nishanik game similar to what they did against Little City, they, they'd probably be sitting at a 2-2 two and two record. Nonetheless, we're here at 1-3. and three. Um, Elk County comes in with a 3-0 and o record, like we said before, with wins against Cowdy. And Jayberg. Jayberg, and then is it Smithport, maybe? Yeah. But, um, I mean, it's, it's really early in the season to tell anything right now, so. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, so uh, not really sure what we have in store, but uh, Elk, they only warmed up six guys, so it's going to be a short bench. The JV guys now coming out, and they'll at least fill chairs if bodies are needed, but it looks like uh, Coach Straub's going to roll with six guys. Obviously, one of those men will be Mr. Jordan Wasco, number three, the senior guard at 5'10". Excellent ball handler. Uh, Dicer can shoot it, can dish it. Um, probably sell you the undercoating on a used car too if he learned anything from his old man. <laughs> but um, he will be uh, matched up, I'm assuming, with one of our guards, either Mr. Haynes or Mr. Pete. That'll be a fun one to watch. Um, but we're getting ready here for starting lineups and national anthem. Uh, anything to add before we get rolling here? Oh. I mean, you never know if Cornball guards Wasco though, because last game, Cornball guarded Nyquist, so we could see that too. You know, and that's a good point. Um, and I sung Caleb's praises late last year when he got a lot of playoff time due to foul trouble, and it wasn't something I think was uh, anticipated, but he answered every bell, and uh, he's a defensive specialist. So, mm -hmm. so you're right. That may be another option for Brookville. Yeah, they got a lot of options. Dave Osborne reading us the riot act, telling us to be kind, not swear. Can you keep uh, can you keep it clean tonight, Oh? I'll try. That's all we can ask. Mm -hmm. 
You know what they used to call that gym up in St. Mary's? The Dutch oven. I think I've heard that once or twice. Yeah. National anthem here to play. What kind of theme we got here in the student section now? Is that a beach theme? Hawaiian theme. Hawaiian theme, all right, all right. I don't see any lays over there. <laughs> They're not that pretty to begin with. Jordan Wasco, number three. Lance O'Neill, number 15, a 5'9 junior. Oh, get the rest of them for me. At guard, Timmy Branock. At forward, number 24, Will Wortman. Number 25, Colby Noosebaum. Is it Noosebaum? Yep, Nussbaum. Okay. And for your Brookville starting lineup, number five, Jesse Lucas. And at guard, number 14, Kellen Haynes. And another guard, number 21, Jack Pete. At forward, Caleb Cornball. Another forward, Jake Samayan. Kind of interesting to see uh, Jack Peet get the start tonight. Must be working hard in practice. Nice yeah. to see him getting rewarded a little bit there. Hey, do we have a fifth starter for Elk? I got Wasco, O'Neill, Brannick, and Nussbaum. Find me the five man. You got Wartman? No. Will Wartman? Wartman, there he is. Not Six to be confused foot junior with Newman. Forward. Wartman, 24. All right. Will with one L. Can only afford one. Hey, I'm going to try and keep book here, so you're going to have to help me because I'm not Fletch-like. I can't keep a book and keep talking. And All right. Let's hope for a good game here, huh? This should be a fun one. I think it should be a good one, yeah. We need to get a dub here. <laughs> Is that yeah. how the kids say it? A dub? Yeah. Do I sound old saying it? Can I say it? Sure. All right. <laughs> Big fan of the referee run. You know how the referee run is? The real, yeah. real like, exaggerated elbows. Like, they, it looks like from the upper half they're running 15 miles an hour, but they're really not. Yeah. Big fan of that. See what you're saying. Here we go with the tip. That's uh, one by Jake or Mr. Samayan, but it goes right to Jordan Wasco. ECC starts up top. Mr. O'Neill with the basketball. He'll slide it over. Wartman works the baseline. He's rejected by Lucas. Rebounded by ECC. That ball is going to be out of bounds. Retained by Elk County. Who got the block there? Is that Lucas? 
I'd give it to Lucas, yeah. There's so a bunch around there, but. I'm like the Red Bank guy. Well, give him 50 cents a piece. Two of them. Yeah. Haynes works Nussbaum, slides it back to Wasco. Sorry, that's O'Neal up top. Elk looks to drive, hands to Wasco. He almost fell down. Pete wants to travel, doesn't get it. Elk around the perimeter. Brannick off the side, giving back to him. Here's Wasco, he's gonna look to drive, pull up, nothing there. Cornball shuts that down. Brookville playing very aggressive defense. Elk extremely patient, as they always usually typically are. There's a miss by O'Neal, gathered by Samayan. Pete brings the Raiders down for their first offensive set. Haynes. What do we got here? Offensive foul. Haynes with a shove. Is that who they're giving it to? Oh, no, they're moving screen on Lucas. My bad, my bad. So that's number one on Mr. Lucas. I didn't see that. Yeah, I didn't see it either. It, I thought they were going to get a carry on, on yeah, Kellen. Yeah, that's but, what uh, I thought. It looked like, I'm assuming the moving screen took place uh, at the same time. Elk now with the basketball. Wasco flips it back to O'Neal, putting on a passing clinic here around the perimeter. Wasco's fast. He travels through the paint and back to the other side, playing Ollie Ollie oxen free through Brookville's defense. You know, Elk has put up a stupid amount of points in their first three games. Um, Sands the game against Jayberg. I've not seen a final on that, but I believe they scored pushing 70 points in both of their contests with Smithport and Cowdy. Uh, this offense typically doesn't score as many points like that because they love to be this um, schematic and this patient with their offensive sets. Wasco drives baseline and up and in. Very patient by Mr. Jordan Wasco, and it's 2-0 Elk. Pete surveys, he's got Wasco in his pocket, gives off to Haynes. Samaya with a high ball screen. Pete fakes the jumper, he's gonna drive baseline, kick the cornball. He's gonna go baseline and miss the layup. Rebound by Nussbaum, and that ball's on the ground. Wasco figures it back out. They're gonna go back to O'Neal. The nice give to Brannick in the middle for the bunny. It's four nothing Elk. Very nice feed. Elk makes it look easy sometimes with their uh, offensive sets. Nice drive by Caleb Kornbaugh. Yeah. Cuts the lead in half. Brookville will come out in the press. Samayan and Lucas, and Lucas is going to pick up his second one early. Not really surprising to me to see a press already. They've got the personnel to run the court, so. Very quick, yeah. O'Neill brings Elk north. Wortman's gonna look to drive all the way to the basket. And we got a foul. And we're gonna have two foul shots here. I believe that's gonna be Mr. Samayan as the guilty party. No. Is that Mr. Luke? They're gonna get Lucas again. That's his third. And we've got 441 left to play in the first quarter. And uh, that's Will Wortman is one for one from the free throw line. He makes it a 5-2 basketball game. Pearson Roman's gonna come in for um, Jesse Lucas. Jesse Lucas already has three fouls, like you said. And Wortman's gonna make a second. Pete's gonna bring it up. It's uh, kind of interesting. That I don't know uh, if, if Lucas cracked the starting lineup against Oil City and, and uh, Neshanik, but if he did, a quick exit, and that's a three ball from Kellen Haynes to bring Brookville to within one. They're gonna continue to press. Wasco beats the press. Nice move. 
Nice block by Samayan. Block by Samayan, and Ruhlman picks up the loose ball, and he's going to be fouled. And uh, Timmy Brannock's asking for an explanation. His hands and palms are pointed towards the sky. The official doesn't listen, nor does he give any type of uh, explanation. He just says, you're getting a foul, young man. Go play defense. It's 6-5, four minutes left here in the first quarter. Ruhlman with the basketball. He gives the Pete. Cornball looks in the middle. That ball is in and out. Kellen Haynes hit 350. Nice bounce pass, and that ball is tied up. <laughs> Cornball takes a stare at Wortman. Cornball and Looking Wortman. Looking down at him. And with the biceps and triceps of Mr. Cornball, <laughs> I'm not sure how many loose balls he's going to lose. Yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to try and take a ball from him. Or creatine by the looks of it. Looks <laughs> like he knows where uh, where the weight room is. Pete brings Brookville Hits. south. 6-5. Elk leads 338. Pete drives and we're gonna have a blocking foul underneath. He's gonna go to the line. Got number 33, Charlie Getchy picks up a foul here. Waiting for some updates from the uh, A&M Family Restaurant scoreboard. We're waiting on some, uh, at least a score from Elk County. We've got a live reporter. <laughs> Big Papa Pump is up in uh, Elk watching the girls take on the Lady Crusaders. Jack Pete knocks down the first of his free throws. at 6'6", 335 left here in the first. Pete two for two, Brookville leads 7-6. Oh, we got a travel. Cornball was trying to get a charge there. Yeah, and that was a little odd. Wartman gets called with a travel, but it looks like he almost kind of gave a forearm. Yeah, to um, Cornball there. To Cornball, yeah, but uh, Nothing called, but then he gets the travel. Haynes up top. He's got Wartman in his pocket. And uh, Pete goes baseline, tries the runner. Uh, nothing doing. O'Neill with the basketball. Look to drive. He'll start over. Given direction. Wasco goes to the corner. You got to assume they're going to try and get him started here soon. And there it is, right on cue. Wasco knocks down a three ball. It's 9-7 ECC, under three left in the first quarter. Pete looks to take, oh, and we got an offensive charge. Wasco led him right into Mr. O'Neill, who takes the charge, and that's going to be Jack's first. O'Neill looks to drive right through the Brookville press. He does. He's got baseline here. Oh, geez. Samayan went about nine feet into the air. Luckily, he looks to be okay. He'll get charged with the foul. little confusion as to uh, what's going on here. Um, just a veteran move here from the Elk County coaching staff. Taking a couple guys out of the paint to uh, give further instruction. Um, will Wartman will now join the, uh, the fray in the middle as Nussbaum walk, knocks down. He knocked down both or one of two? He's both. That makes it an 11-7 lead for Elk, and that's a giveaway by Kellen Haynes. Elk will go the other way. Nice move, but a missed layup by O'Neal. But Nussbaum is there to put it back. That's four on the night for him. ECC extends their lead, 13-7. Two minutes left here to play in the first quarter. Brookville trailing by six. 
Pete hands off to Ruhlman. Samine calling for the ball in the paint. He's working on Nussbaum. Kornbaugh at the top of the key. He'll turn and find Samine who will launch from three and find the bottom of the net. 13-10, Brookville trails. He's got a lot of arc on his shot. Yes, it does. It almost hit the camera up top. Ruhlman late to get into O'Neill's face and he knocks down a three to make it 16-10. Pete finds Ruhlman off the perimeter. Kornbaugh up top to Haynes. Ruhlman left wide open off the corner. Three ball doesn't fall. O'Neill will run. He's got Wartman and he'll decide to take it himself. Wartman with the putback attempt doesn't go. Jack looks to run. He's got Wasco behind the back is knocked down by Wasco. He'll take Elk County. He's going to try and drive the paint. Jump step. That's rejected by Pete from behind. Out of bounds. Elk County will retain. We're going to see Luke Burton come in for Caleb Cornball. There's another guy that looks like he knows where the gym is. Luke Burton. And Jesse Lucas is going to come back in. He's got three fouls. It's a little rock set dangerous for me. Three fouls, 49 seconds left. Still don't like that song, do you? Gonna play it again on the way home. Wasco retrieves the toss in. We're under a minute here. I would assume Elk County will look for the last shot if if things remain status quo here. Wasco will drive. Let's Pete go by him. Ball out of bounds. That was off of Wortman's back. Little uncharacteristic there, under a minute. And we got a no, delinquent horn here. Not sure what that was for. I'm not sure what the ref said. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, he's either. talking to the coach over there. Must have been telling him what happened. I'm not sure. Haynes misses off the outer edge. 15 left to go. Elk leads by six. Wasco thought he was going to pull it. He puts it back in his pocket. We're under 10 seconds. O'Neill and Wasco play hat, cat, and mouse. Wasco feeds with a nice screen to O'Neill. He's just short. And that'll be the end of the first quarter as Elk leads Brookville 16 10. You're listening to Raiders Sports and the YDL Network. Mac Metals. Our mission? We strive to be a leading metal manufacturer in the steel industry. By investing in those closest to us, our employees, and our customers, we aim to build lifelong partnerships while impacting the community around us. Family owned and operated since 1989. That's Mac Metals, located by BWP Bat Factory off exit 86, I-80. Hey y'all, this is Mark Bow. I'm at Devil's Barbecue and this place is awesome. These folks are nice. We came up here the last time and we couldn't get enough of it. I saw a sign. I came 10 miles out of the way because we had to have it again. And all I know is we might not show up to work tomorrow because it's that good. <laughs> See y'all. Devil's Barbecue, where it's all about to smoke. Brookville, PA. Hi, I'm Cooper. Oh, I'm Roa. And I'm Mom. I play for the Brookville Raiders. Hook Insurance says, Go Raiders! Hook Insurance Services is a family-owned, independent insurance agency specializing in providing personalized insurance products that fit the needs of your family or your business. Find them on Facebook or at HokeInsurance.net. We're back here, second quarter from Brookville Area High School. ECC leads Brookville 16-10. Mr. O'Neill on the perimeter. He's gonna feed Nussbaum on the blocks. Nice spin move, but that ball is up for grabs and it's gonna go Brookville's direction. Nussbaum is lanky. He plays taller than he is. Been very aggressive on the boards. Ruhlman's gonna take a seat. 
And who does that bring back into the game, Oh, I Cornball. believe Cornball, yeah. yeah. High ball screen by Burton, he rolls. Pete surveys, finds Haynes. Haynes checked well by O'Neill. Nussbaum up top. Pete all the way across, he'll feed Haynes, he'll launch and he'll find nothing. Burton works for the board, but he can't corral it. It's gonna roll off his shin out of bounds, ECC's basketball. Brookfield trails by six, 7-17 left in the first half. Still waiting on that update from Elk County on the girls' side, nothing yet. Has ECC had a sub yet? I don't, uh, yeah, they have. They have? Yeah. It, it seems to be the, this, these five been on for like the whole time. Brannick with the bunny extends ECC's lead to eight, their largest of the night. Burton drives, Cornbaugh off dribble. Samayan cuts, that's shut down by Nussbaum. He's close to a five second, he had to get rid of it and that's picked off. Wartman corrals, he hands to O'Neill. They look to go to a double digit lead here potentially. Wasco comes up off the key. He's got Brannick calling for the basketball and that'll be launched by Wartman from three off the back end of the rim. And there's the lanky Nussbaum again, carrying down another board. High ball screen for Wasco who can't put it off the glass. Samayan almost takes steps, he doesn't. Pete takes over. We're under six minutes here. Brookfield trails by eight, and Wasco is going to pick Pete's pocket. Ball's on the ground, and Cornball is going to pick it up. And how that wasn't a 10 second violation, I don't know. But a nice feed to Luke Burton underneath the basket. He's fouled. He'll go to the line. 5.50 left. Brookfield down by 18, or by eight, I'm sorry. Britain's gonna make his first. Mm, number five, Frankie Smith comes in for number 15, Lance O'Neill for the Crusaders. Oh. In and out, Burton goes one for two. It's a seven point lead for ECC. Wasco hands off to O'Neill. Nice spin move by Nussbaum. He can't get it to go. Kornbach comes down with the board. He'll bring the basketball up. Haynes now guarded. He's off the perimeter. He'll look to drive. He's knocked away into Samayan's hands. He'll find Haynes in the corner all by himself, and he's short. Burton with a nice board, but he can't get rid of it in time. And Cornball is going to pick up a foul as he's right in front of Nussbaum on the rebound. 18-11, 5.04 left here. First half from Brookville Area High School on the Raiders Sports in conjunction with YDL Sports. Not a bad foul. Just trying to get the ball back. I like the aggressiveness. Yeah. Brookfield's not running a press anymore on defense. I think of too many cheapies coming out. Um, Elk yeah. just seems to be a little athletic to, to try that out right now. There might be a time in the game where that's productive again, but Coach Wright says not right now. Let's just play him straight up, pick him up at half court. They trail by seven. We got a cheap hand check foul out front now. That's gonna be on Jack Pete. I believe that's gonna be number two on him. Pearson Roman's gonna come in for Caleb Cornball again. Gave that foul on the board to number 23. 
Caleb Cornbaugh. I thought that was Jack Pete. But yeah, I thought that was Jack Pete too. That's gonna be Cornbaugh's second. It's somebody's second, either Cornbaugh's or Jack's. Yeah. I'm not so sure the board had it right. Wasco guarded by Pete, screened by Nussbaum. He's gonna roll off it, nothing there. Nussbaum. First step was quick. First step was illegal, that's a travel. 18-11, Brookfield trails here. 4.15 left in the first half. Luke Burton is gonna continue to stay on the court. I know he had a couple threes in the JV game, or at least one. I'd like to see him get a shot here. Elk County playing extremely aggressive defense. Here's Burton from three-point land. It doesn't fall off the back edge of the rim. Rebounded by Brannick. Oh, that almost went out there. O'Neal gets a high screen from Nussbaum. He rolls, but Samayan says not tonight. O'Neal now will try to travel paint. He'll pull up from the free throw line, get nothing but air. Nice feed to O'Neal who finds Wartman underneath the hoop. Nice dish, nice give and go there on Elk County's side of the basketball. It's 2011 as we approach the three minute mark in the first half. Brookville's gotta find a way to score points here. Burton's gonna drive right to the hole and score two to make it 20 to 13. Wasco to Nussbaum, he's gonna find O'Neal in the middle and Jack Pete's gonna pick one up there, that is on him. Coach Wrights doesn't look impressed with that call. Nice cut by Wartman, and that was almost too easy for Will Wartman off the inbound, completely uncontested. 22-13, Elk leads. We're under three minutes here from Brookville Area High School. Pearson Rollman's bounce pass into the paint is picked off and led ahead to Timmy Brannick, who lays it in, and Coach Wrights is going to get a timeout. You're listening to Brookville Raider Sports and YDL Sports. Everybody is talking about A&M Family Restaurant in Brookville. As you can see from these pictures, their hot home cooking is wonderful, from hearty meals to the best pies and desserts. Make A&M Family Restaurant your place for lunch or dinner. Open all days but Mondays. Enjoy true family dining at AM Family Restaurant in Brookville. Proud sponsors of this telecast and supporter of youth athletics. Hey here with the girls at Workplace Health. Alyssa, Alyssa, Ryan. They are proud sponsors of Brookville Raider Wrestling. Workplace Health is an occupational medicine facility, employee-related health services, screenings, preventions, treatments, anything to keep our employees healthy. And it's right here on Allegheny Boulevard in Brookville, so if you are an employer and you need those services, make sure you get them. Thanks to your generous donations, Goodwill Industries has been able to be more than a store. We are proud to help those in need meet life challenges through opportunity, education, training, and work throughout our communities. Thank you for your support, and best of luck to the Raiders this season. Live report from uh, Elk County. Big Papa Punt says it is 18-10 Crusaders over the Lady Raiders. Familiar score. Brookville out of the timeout. Cornball is going to look to drive, and his pass looks like it was deflected. And we're going to have a, an officials gathering here because I think somebody may have been straight lined, maybe. And no, we're not going to have anything overturned. ECC basketball. 24-13, 225 and a running clock in the first half here from Brookville Area High School. O'Neill brings Elk County. Nussbaum rolls off a screen, nothing there. Now he's got the basketball on the baseline. He finds a cutting Wartman for easy two points. Will Wartman coming back door, nobody there. It's 
two minutes left in the first half. Nice cut by Burton, but uh, O'Neal is going to get called for the foul there. He's kind of got a little handsy as uh, Luke made his cut. Never get handsy, yeah. though. Get yeah. you in trouble. <laughs> Number 11 checks into the game. Chris Chase Simbeck, 5'8", freshman. Nice cut by Burton, he just can't find enough glass to get that to go down. Boy, Elk just makes you work for every point you get. Will Wartman gives back to Wasco. Oh, I thought he was going to pull up here from about four feet behind the three-point line. He decides not to. Nussbaum's going to move. He's going to shake. He's going to give off to Simbeck, who's going to drive. Back to Brannick. Left-hander doesn't go. Nussbaum all over. Oh, oh, oh. You have two Elk County Crusaders who go flying over the back of Samayan, and they call him for a travel. I don't understand that at all. I don't understand much hoops to begin with, but that's not good. The basketball gods say, we'll give it back to you anyway. Brookfield retains the basketball. Pete's going to look to drive. He's mugged in the paint. We've got a hold here on Nussbaum. Ones are wild on the scoreboard. 111 left. Elk doubling up Brookville. 26-13. Jack Pete continues to throw the ball in. It's been the same five for Brookville for a long time now. Do a little housekeeping on the floor here. I don't know, is it? Someone must have spilled something. Uh, we got a, or a uh, paying attendee that spilled some type of liquid on the floor. It's now being wiped up by, uh, <laughs> and Coach Straw brings his own towel out in a serious veteran move and buys himself a little talk with the officials. You'd be hard pressed to find a slicker head coach in District 9, all sports included. Good idea. Fox's Pizza Den of Brookville and Dubois is a proud sponsor of Brookville Athletics. Also a proud employer of our area's youth. The next time you're hungry, think Fox's Pizza Den of Brookville and Dubois. Brookville Equipment's always been well known in the community as a great local employer. Very family oriented company. Brookville has a really great benefits plan here. We're pretty diverse in what we do from mining to streetcars to locomotives. We're helping the infrastructure of the country. Medical insurance, dental, vision, competitive wages, paid time off. It's an opportunity. It's something that you can enjoy doing. And you can apply right through our website. Securing your financial future begins by planning today. McKinley & Company has been a leading provider of business and financial advisory services since 1983. Our team of certified public accountants and financial planners will help you navigate the challenges of an increasingly complex financial world so that you can achieve your goals. Call or come in today for a consultation. We're back here, folks. Not sure what uh, was spilled on the floor, but it must have been bad. Jack Pete says, oh, thank you for that blow. I'll take it. It's 26-16 now. Ten-point lead for Elk as we come under a minute here left to play in the first half from Brookville Area High School. Coach Straub's going to take a 30-second timeout. You're listening to Raider Sports and the YDL Sports Network. Excuse me, do you have any campers that are easy to maneuver? My dad struggles on driveways. What? I'm a good driver. I'm okay. 
Tell that to the fire hydrant. Do you have any ways, nice bathrooms? My mom is kind of honey. That's not true. I can be outdoorsy. You know what? Actually, a backup camera would be nice. We need a fridge, too. And bunk beds. Oh, wait, and a tub, uh, just in case. I think we can help all of you. Three Rock RV Center of Brookville. Finding you and your family the perfect fit when it comes to recreational vehicles. Back here, second quarter, 55.2 seconds left. Elk leads 26-16. They'll have the basketball here. Jordan Wasco guarded by Pete. He'll bring it back out. I'll be really, really surprised here if Elk doesn't milk this for the last shot of the half, but I've been wrong a couple times today. Student section begins to give a golf clap. Wasco guarded tightly by Jack Pete. Picks up his dribble, finds a cutting O'Neal, who then finds a Brannick. They kick it back out, start over. 22 seconds left here, first half. Wasco drives, finds Nussbaum, lets two Brookfield defenders fly by and goes up for the easy layup. We got 10 seconds here, 28-16, Elk leads. Pete looks to drive on Wasco, and Wasco gives up a foul on the top of the key, and they're gonna call that an intentional foul. As of right now, we'll see if this gets changed. Intentional foul, and Coach Straub says, you have to be kidding me. And now we get a demonstration on what took place. Straub says, I'm not buying whatever you're selling. Pete knocks down the first one. It's 28-17 with 3.4 left. He'll shoot one more and be given the basketball back. Pete knocks both down to bring it back to a 10-point deficit. 3.4 left. They need this bucket. We have an official in the stands that's telling them that ball should be inbounded from the baseline. And now they get it correct. That official will remain nameless. Coach Straub doesn't like that. We've got people trying to leave the gym through the uh, wet area of the floor that seems now to be dry. All hell's breaking loose here in the last three seconds. And now five seconds violation called on Jack Pete as he did not inbound the ball in time. Lance O'Neill will check in for Elk County for this last 3.4 left in the first half. Elk leads 28-18. Inbounded by Will Wartman. He'll launch from half court. And he'll just miss by a couple feet. End of the first half. ECC leads 28-18. Oh, can you get us to halftime? You're watching Brookville Sports. Raider Sports. Raider Sports. In conjunction with the YDL, YDL Sports Network. Mac Metals. Our mission? We strive to be a leading metal manufacturer in the steel industry. By investing in those closest to us, our employees, and our customers, we aim to build lifelong partnerships while impacting the community around us. Family owned and operated since 1989. That's Mac Metals, located by BWP Bat Factory. Hey y'all, this is Mark Bow. I'm at Devil's Barbecue and this place is awesome. These folks are nice. We came up here the last time and we couldn't get enough of it. I saw a sign. I came 10 miles out of the way because we had to have it again. And all I know is we might not show up to work tomorrow because it's that good. <laughs> See y'all. Devil's Barbecue, where it's all about to smoke. Brookville, PA. Nate here with the girls at Workplace Health. 
Alyssa, Alyssa, Ryan. They are proud sponsors of Brookville Raider Wrestling. Workplace Health is an occupational medicine facility, employee related health services, screenings, preventions, treatments, anything to keep our employees healthy. And it's right here on Allegheny Boulevard in Brookville. So if you are an employer and you need those services, make sure you get a hold of Workplace, Workplace Health. Health. Everybody is talking about A&M Family Restaurant in Brookville. As you can see from these pictures, their hot home cooking is wonderful, from hearty meals to the best pies and desserts. Make A&M Family Restaurant your place for lunch or dinner. Open all days but Mondays. Enjoy true family dining at A&M Family Restaurant in Brookville. Proud sponsors of this telecast and supporter of youth athletics. Hey. Thanks to your generous donations, Goodwill Industries has been able to be more than a store. We are proud to help those in need meet life challenges through opportunity, education, training, and work throughout our communities. Thank you for your support, and best of luck to the Raiders this season. Oh, hey, we finished up this morning. Yep, ready to roll. So it's done already? Yep. Listen, guys, I'm kind of in the doghouse with my wife. I was hoping to stay here a little while. You could take her camping. Get her flowers. Or apologize for whatever you did. You guys are good. You're too good. Fast and reliable maintenance services from Three Rock RV Center. Thanks again. Three Rock RV Center of Brookville. Securing your financial future begins by planning today. McKinley & Company has been a leading provider of business and financial advisory services since 1983. Our team of certified public accountants and financial planners will help you navigate the challenges of an increasingly complex financial world so that you can achieve your goals. Call or come in today for a consultation with one of our experts. Fox's Pizza Den of Brookville and Dubois is a proud sponsor of Brookville Athletics. Also a proud employer of our area's youth. The next time you're hungry, think Fox's Pizza Den of Brookville and Dubois. Harry Vrobel here from Vrobel's Heating and Cooling, where I've installed heating and air conditioning systems since 1975 in the Tri-County area. And I'm Dave Vrobel, and your comfort is our number one concern. And it always will be. Robles Heating and Cooling. Call us at 814-849-4842. Hey, this is Alyssa Hanna, Physician Assistant and Facility Director from Workplace Health, wishing our Brookville Raider wrestling team lots of success this season. Workplace Health is your local occupational medicine facility conveniently located on Allegheny Boulevard in Brookville, right off of Interstate 80. We offer drug screening, pre-employment physicals, hearing testing, lab draws, workman's comp treatment, and so much more. If your company is looking for a trusted partner for the medical care of its employees, then look no further than Workplace Health. Patient-focused, affordable, accessible, and qualified. Call us today at 814-715-7471 to schedule an appointment. Go Hi, I'm Cooper. Hi, oh, I'm Maria. And I'm Mom. I play for the Brooklyn Raiders. Hope Insurance says, Go Raiders! Hope Insurance Services is a family owned independent insurance agency specializing in providing personalized insurance products that fit the needs of your family or your business. Find them on Facebook or at hokeinsurance.net. Brookville Equipment's always been well known in the community as a great local employer. Very family oriented company. Brookville has a really great benefits plan here. We're pretty diverse in what we do from mining to streetcars to locomotives. We're helping the infrastructure of the country. 
medical insurance, dental, vision, competitive wages, paid time off. It's an opportunity. It's something that you can enjoy doing. And you can apply right through our website. Strong's painting and pressure washing of Dubois is rooting for the Brookville Raiders this season. Strong's painting and pressure washing does painting, staining, pressure washing, and roof washing. Contact them online at strongspainting.net. Looking for a new career? Clarion Bathwear wants you. Add to their production team working Monday through Friday. Receive a generous benefits package, great weekly pay and bonuses, plus a $600 sign-on bonus. Apply in person at Clarion. Lifespan Family Services supports the Brookville Raiders and all the children in need of a loving home. Become a foster parent today to help a child thrive. Open your heart and your home to a child in need. Visit LifespanFamilyServices.com to make a difference today. Every child deserves a family. Back live here at Brookville Area High School where Brookville trails ECC 28-18. Oh, give it to me straight. What needs to happen here to see Brookville overcome this 10-point deficit and get a win? Uh, they're going to play a lot better defense and not give up cheap cheapos. Like, they're giving up a lot of cheap uh, baskets that they shouldn't be giving up and letting off of defensive runs and giving a lot of turnovers they need to settle those down a little bit too you sound like somebody that's been texting me all night almost to the to the t 
of the message. That person will remain nameless, but uh, good observation. ECC starts the basketball. We'll move left to right on your television screen or phone or whatever you decide to watch. Jordan Wasco with the ball. He'll find Nussbaum in the paint. He's got some mine on him. And a uh, nice feed to Brannick, who gets a layup. <laughs> I believe that's number eight on the night for Brannick, who's had a nice basketball game. Speaking to um, Coach Straub and his um, his staff here, <coughs> mainly uh, his his son, who is AJ, nice guy. Um, ran into him on a baseball field numerous times this summer. A lot of the co the uh, issue. Pete looks to find a cutting Jesse Lucas, who then finds Cornbaugh, puts it up and in. And brings that lead back down to 10. Nice relay of passes there. Wasco from the corner tries to get his own board. And we got a jump ball, cornball on Wasco. <clears throat> it's going to be Brooksville's ball. Legitimate concern on Elk's, on Elk's part about the water spilled on the floor because that was the same exact spot last year, if you remember. And I remember Judge Floridora being here and telling me um, Jordan Wasco towards ACL on that part of the floor exactly almost to the day a year ago and there's a charge call on kellen haynes as will wartman stood his ground and picks up a charge is that what's on wasco's knee or does he have a tat uh, watch him when he comes facing towards you i'm not sure he'd uh, get a tat maybe something to remember well, the injury but. yeah it's something little I'll have to take a look. He runs too fast to see it. Yeah. Yell at him, see if he'll slow down. <laughs> I'll try. O'Neal drives the paint, finds Nussbaum, who gives off to Brannick, who's fouled. And Caleb Cornbaugh says, not me. Surely not me. But the official goes to the table and says 23 is the guilty party. That's number three on Caleb with 616 left in the third. Coach Wright's asking for an explanation. The way the official turned around, I'm gonna suggest that wasn't a question as much as it was a statement that the official wearing the patch didn't care for. He simply turns around and continues to officiate. Brannick misses the first of his two free throws. He misses both. And ball's tied up between Samine and Nussbaum. That ball will remain with ECC. Ball's picked off by Kellen Haynes and picked up by Cornball, laid up and in. The Raiders draw within eight. Nice defensive play by Kellen Haynes. Caleb Cornball, man on the moment, and now Jack Pete's gonna do the same thing. And Coach Straub's gonna say enough of that garbage. Let's get a timeout. 30-24, 5.54 left here in the third quarter. We got a little run from our Raiders. You're listening and watching Raiders Sports in conjunction with YDL Sports. Everybody is talking about A&M Family Restaurant in Brookville. As you can see from these pictures, their hot home cooking is wonderful, from hearty meals to the best pies and desserts. Make A&M Family Restaurant your place for lunch or dinner. Open all days but Mondays. Enjoy true family dining at AM Family Restaurant in Brookville. Proud sponsors of this telecast and supporter of youth athletics. Five fifty left here in the third quarter. Brookville has trimmed the lead to a six-point deficit. I'm sorry, trimmed the, the uh, deficit to six points. 30-24 ECC leads. O'Neal looks to drive. He'll back back out. He's pressured by Haynes. He'll find Brannick and give back to O'Neal to start over. 
Wasco has to have 10,000 steps on his pedometer. He's just running baseline up the right. There's another defensive play by Brookville. Fight on the ground. That ball's going to be tied up, and that's going to be white basketball. Update from Elk County. Our girls trail 24-17 at half. I'm sure that game's into the third quarter by now. That's old news. Haynes brings the basketball up for Brookville. Samine's going to look to drive. Nussbaum got a piece of him. Where's the basketball going? He's going to stay with Brookville. <clears throat> Kim Rhodes, faithful listener, saying uh, we don't have any audio. No, we're on here. Is that one on? I completely missed what we just what just happened here. And it must have been a three ball because the lead is now down to three. It's 30-27 Brookville Trails. There's another turnover by ECC. Haynes with Lucas, dish to Lucas. Late, he should have put it up himself. He tried to find Samayan. Pete travel, or runs with Wasco through the paint. Back, back out to Nussbaum. Here's Wasco, he'll drive, spin, layup, and off the rim. But Nussbaum with the board, he goes tumbling towards the mat. Jack Pete with the follow, very athletic follow. And all of a nice sudden, finish. Brookville trails by one. That little run gave him a spark. Who provided the spark? That Who? little run. Oh, yeah. I mean... Oh, Jack Pete with a block from behind. Nussbaum barks at him, and he's got something to prove as he's traveling Ooh. down the court. Ooh. And we got a... We got a block? We're going to give Wartman? No, they're going to get Wasco with the foul. That's his second... 342 here left in the third. It's 30 to 29. Yes. Brookville looking for their first lead since they led 7-6 midway through the first quarter. Cornbaugh zips it over to Lucas. Samayan, big man playing the top of the key. Cornbaugh. Pete looking to try and beat Wasco on the blocks. He gets fed, but he'll back out, nothing doing. He's now going to drive baseline. And what do we got? <laughs> Ball's going to remain with Brookville. Cornbaugh takes the inbounds. He's going to sling it over to Lucas. Finds a cutting Haynes, and that ball is up and in, and Brookville leads 31 30. 310 left here in the third quarter. Brookville is on a 11-0 run. And it started with the defense. As Owen pointed out in a couple of texters, the intensity was just not there, but it has arrived. I'm not so sure what Coach Wright said or did, but uh, he has pulled the right button. Wasco ends the run with a 15 or sorry 12 foot jumper. It's 32-31 ECC with a 2.30 second. Two minutes 30 seconds left here in the third quarter. And Lucas is going to give a shoulder to O'Neal and he's going to pick up what appears to be his fourth personal foul. He got away with the flop there. Calling a flop -o? Oh, yeah. That's a fine in the NBA. I know. Big time. Yeah. Big f fine. Oh. And we got another towel. Student sections pointing all over the place. 
They're just trying to be helpful. They were messing with him. I agree. <laughs> Charlie Krug's shorts might be painted on. I'm going to stop looking over there. Nice lob rejected. And we're going to have another tie up between Nussbaum and Cornbaugh. That ball will remain with ECC. 32 31, ECC leads. 218 left here in the third quarter. Another backdoor cut inbound play by the Crusaders. It just looks too easy. Nussbaum extends Elks lead back to three. It's 34-31 as we approach the two-minute mark here from Brookville Area High School. Pete on the blocks. Wasco is going to pick up his second or third. That is going to be number three on Jordan Wasco. And I really like the idea and switch of putting Jack Pete down on the blocks if Wasco's going to follow. Nice inbounds to Kellen Haynes. It's a 34-33 ball game. Under two minutes left here in the third. O'Neal crosses up, gives to Wasco. They zip it around. Brannick now on the perimeter. He'll give back to Nussbaum. O'Neal cuts to the baseline, nothing there. Wasco on top of the perimeter. Haynes up in his grill. Wasco lost control, but it's going to be picked up by Brannick. He's in trouble. He finally finds O'Neal in the corner. Sorry, that's Wartman. Nussbaum with the layup, but he's going to get fouled. Jack Pete says, not me, please not me, please not me. And it's going to be me. And we got another towel on the floor. Obviously, Elk very concerned with the health and safety of all their guys, but specifically when you got a guy that um, is a year removed from a major injury, you can understand that there's a little concern, probably some flashbacks. Nobody wants to see that. So they're making sure the playing service is as clean and safe as possible. Nussbaum knocks down the first of his two. It's 35-33 Elk leads with 117 left in the third. Jack Pete has three fouls now, that was his third. Yeah, that's trouble, but I do like Pete down on the blocks. I think it's a good move from this Brookville Raider coaching staff. He's calling for it. Now Nussbaum drops down. They've removed Wasco from that position. Haynes with a nifty little six-foot runner off the glass to bring Brookville back to within one. Coach Straw barking out orders. Will Wartman will drive. He'll go to his left and he'll be fouled. He'll shoot two with 38.6 left. Elk leads by one. And that foul. On number 32, Mr. Samayan. He's going to get his first. Wortman knocks down the first one. Six points on inbound plays for Elk. Six gimmies. Yeah. Uncontested. Yeah. Wortman knocks down both. It's 38-35. Timeout, Brookville. You're watching Raider Sports in conjunction with YDL Sports. Hey, this is...
We're back here live at Brookville. 35-38. Crusaders lead by three. Haynes inbounds to Luke Burton. Haynes is going to bring it up. Over to Pete. Pete's going to find Burton on the block. Nice and move. He's it two. That's a large mammal. That's a big boy. You yeah. might want to get off the tracks. That train's coming. It's 38-37, under 15 ticks here in the third quarter. Elks now in a dogfight. I can assure you they didn't think this was going to be the case at half. Definitely not. Wortman almost has that ball taken away. And that's Frankie Smith from about six feet beyond the perimeter, knocks down a three ball to make it 41-37 at the end of three. You're watching Raider Sports and the YDL Sports Network. Excuse me, do you have any cameras that are easy to maneuver? My dad struggles on driveways. What? I'm a good driver. I'm okay. Tell that to the fire hydrant. Do you have any ways, nice bathrooms? My mom is kind of high maintenance. That's not true. I can be outdoorsy. You know what? Actually, a backup camera would be nice. We need a fridge, too. And bunk beds. Oh, wait, and a tub, uh, just in case. I think we can help all of you. Three Rock RV Center of Brookville. Finding you and your family the perfect fit when it comes to recreational vehicles. Looking for a new career? Clarion Bathware wants you. Add to their production team working Monday through Friday. Receive a generous benefits package, great weekly pay and bonuses, plus a $600 sign-on bonus. Apply in person at Clarion Bathware, Route 208 in Marble. Clarion Bathware, loving every minute of it. We're back live for the last chapter, possibly, of this Brookville versus Elk County. Start of the fourth, 41-37 Elk leads. After that, Frankie Smith three. Here comes Jesse Lucas to start the offense for Brookville. Jesse over to Burton. Burton Haynes on top. How do you tell the difference between the Lucas twins? Numbers, I don't know. Good idea. Hair. Haynes is going to jack him three, and it's going to go in and out. That was down. Newsbomb is going to get the rebound. O'Neill brings Elk across the timeline here, leading by four. O'Neill looks to drive. He'll go the length, and he'll score. 43-37, Elk leads. Haynes is going to bring it up for Brooksville. Pass over to Pete. Pete's going to shoot a three, and it's going to air ball. That would have been a huge shot in the arm for Brookville to cut that lead in half. Falls short. Jack with a strip. Can't retain it. Wasco picks it up. O'Neal guarded heavily by Haynes. He'll drive. Pull back out. Handoff back to Wasco, he's up top. Back to O'Neal. Nussbaum cuts and looks for the ball. Burton says no here. Haynes with a hand check up top. 6.35 left. Elk leads by six. That's Kellen's second of the night. Brannock will use the backcourt to get it to O'Neal. 6.30 running clock here in the fourth quarter. Brookfield trails 37-43. Nussbaum with a high ball screen. O'Neal doesn't use it. He goes his own way. And that ball's in and out, but Nussbaum comes down with a rebound. He finds Wasco wide open, time enough to check the temp. He can't knock it down. Elk with another rebound. That ball's on the floor. Ooh. And we got a timeout, Elk. And I'm not so sure that one, he didn't travel, or two, how do you give a timeout when a ball's on the floor and not possessed? Coach Wright's asking for an explanation, but it's short-lived.
AJ Straub now on the floor after the scrum on the ground, making sure that there's nothing slick on the surface. It's become a theme tonight. Six thirteen left here in the fourth. And we're quickly approaching the witching hour here, oh, where wins become losses and losses become wins. Well said, well said. <laughs> I've heard that about every night on Sunday. You also hear it in deer season <laughs> as the sun starts to set, the witching hour. <laughs> It's when the horns come out. Yeah. ECC to inbound. 6-13 left here in the fourth. ECC leads by six. O'Neal drives, and that ball is going to go down, and he's going to go to the line and a chance to make this a three-point play. Lance O'Neal has had a tremendous basketball game here tonight. You have, to, you have to worry about Jordan Wasco and what he brings, but when you're complimented by Lance O'Neal and his ability to not only dribble, but drive, that leaves a lot of issues for the opposing team. O'Neal toes the line, trying to make this a nine point game. Back rim doesn't fall. Kellen Haynes is gonna get the rebound, bring it up for the Raiders. Going to start the offense on the left side. Try and drive, but can't. Gives it to Jack Pete. Jack Pete's going to drive, and he's going to get a shooting foul. He's going to get two shots at the line. Nussbaum slid across late to try and help Wasco as he got beat going left to right. But he does get some body there at the last minute. So Pete will go to the line. 45-37, Brookville trails with 5.51 left here in the fourth. He's going to get his first one on the roll. Set for the second. And he, that's going to go in and out. 38-45. O'Neal brings Elk up court. Nussbaum sets a high ball screen. Hand off to Wasco. O'Neal back with the basketball. Elk in no hurry here. He'll cross over Lucas. Give back to Will Wharton. Nussbaum sets a screen not used. Brannick finds Wasco. Wartman starts back over with Wasco up top. O'Neal and Coach Straub has indicated he's going to begin to take the air out of the basketball. Feed to Nussbaum in the paint. He's working Burton. Nowhere to go. Kicks it back out. Pete with a steal attempt. Nothing doing. O'Neal hands to Wasco. Back to Brannon. Long possession here by the Crusaders. We're at the 4.30 minute mark. Elk continues the lead by seven, 45-38. Brookville with only two fouls so far this quarter, so it's going to be a few before they begin to put Elk on the line. But with a new rule this year, there's Jack with a steal and a very headsy play by Jordan Wasco to call timeout as he's on his back. We're going to take a quick break here. You're watching Raider Sports in the YDL Sports Network. Strong's painting and pressure washing of Dubois is rooting for the Brookville Raiders this season. Strong's painting and pressure washing does painting, staining, pressure washing, and roof washing. Contact them online at strongspainting.net. Hi, I'm Cooper. And I'm Mom. I play for the Brooklyn Raiders. Her concern says, Bye. Bye. 
Raider. Hoke Insurance Services is a family-owned independent insurance agency specializing in providing personalized insurance products that fit the needs of your family or your business. Find them on Facebook or at hokeinsurance.net. We're back live. O'Neal trapped. He'll find Wasco. And that ball's taken away by Haynes. He'll have Wyatt with him. He'll give to Wyatt. Lucas, and uh, that ball's up and in, and it's 47-40. 3.30 left here in the fourth quarter. Nice steal from Haynes. Still down by seven. Need to put something together. O'Neal looks to drive. Haynes cuts him off. O'Neal then... Goes out and around him, tries to put up no foul call. Ball bounces around. Lucas comes up with it. He gives the Haynes. He's going to look to run. Nothing called as he's stripped from behind. Wasco finds Wartman, who looks into the lane, dips and doodles, and finds the runner. And Coach Schraub was telling him to kick it out, and now he applauds the two points. It's 49 40 with 250 left. Pete's going to find Burton on the edge, and he's going to get the three to go. Nice shot by Luke Burton. Whoa, we got a foul here and a technical foul on Brannick, where I'm not so sure the purpose of that. I, that's so egregious. He could have been thrown out of the basketball game. He had a, a, a player down. And then he decided to take two hands and shove Kellen Haynes directly over his fallen teammate. Was that, was that Lance O'Neill? I'm sorry, number 20 oh, is 20. Tommy Bran Timmy Brannick. Okay. I'm not really sure what the cause of that was, but a two-hand shove to, to a Brookville Raider over a fallen teammate. I'm not sure what led up to that, but... Nonetheless, we got a technical foul. Kellen Haynes will shoot two, and Brookfield will retain the basketball. These two free throws are really, really big. Haynes misses the first. Haynes goes one of two from the free throw line. It's a five point elk lead with 2.43 left here in the fourth. Kellen Haynes just made one free throw out of two. He's gonna drive and He's going to get blocked, and he's going to get the ball back. He's going to put up a three. He's going to miss that. And it's going to stay Brookfield ball. Burton is trying to get the rebound there. Going to give it to Burton. Dish it to Samayan. Back to Cornball. Cornball to Samayan. Mine's going to find the cutting Pete. Pete's going to back down on Wasco. He's going to find Burton. Burton's going to put up another three. Oh. Burton's going to get that back and get the two for the nice. We got a lot of bodies flopping. A lot yeah. of bodies flopping. We're under two minutes, and this is a three-point basketball game, and the intensity's picked up. O'Neal's going to travel baseline and find a... 
Good rebound Wharton by. can't put that back. Oh, come on. Pete's going to bring it up. Dish it to Burton. Oh, Burton. Burton. He Thought almost he was going to pull up. the trigger there. Yeah. Pete's got it. He's going to drive, and he's not going to get a foul. Look to be a oh, foul. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Samayan's going to oh. throw the three. He's going to miss oh, it. Oh, your shot. 127 left here. Brookville continues to trail by three. Great look by Luke Burton there, who has ice in his veins right now. Yeah, Burton's looking good right now. Really performing well on the varsity stage, and he just missed tying this basketball game by inches by hitting back rim. I think that's going to be Kellen's third of the night. I think you're right. Yeah, it's going to be his third. So he'll he'll be fine. They're going to leave him in, obviously. Uh, 115 left to go. 46-49. Elk County Catholic. Roscoe with the ball. He's pressured by Pete. He's looking for help. He gives off to O'Neill. Brookville playing a smothering type Ooh. of basketball. Ah. That's a tough foul to stomach there. It looked like Cornball got a piece, but they're going to say he also got a piece of the arm. That's going to be Caleb Cornball. That's number four. five, so that's going to be a shooting foul. It's going to be his, oh, of the quarter, yes. Yeah. Um, that's Cornball's fourth. Four. Yeah. Fifth team foul of the quarter. Elk will shoot two from this point forward, even if we should go to overtime with the new rule change. O'Neill, smooth criminal, knocks down the front end of his two shots. It's 50-46 with 101 left here in the fourth. O'Neill goes one for two. Pete grabs the rebound. 57 ticks left. Coach Wright's going to call timeout here. You want to keep it here or you want to get an ad, Billy? We're going to keep it here. Brookfield trails by four with 57.3 left. <clears throat> what do you think, O? You should never blame the refs, but. So let's not. Yeah. So let's talk about what needs to happen here in this last 57 seconds. Well, we're obviously going to need a couple turnovers. and Not necessarily. I think, I think we got to do, uh, hopefully there's some research as to who we want to put on the line because this is one of the advantages of the new rule to where... If you can, well, let's assume you don't want Mr. O'Neill on the line. You probably don't want Mr. Wasco on the line. So that gives you three other options. As soon as they touch it, let's put them on the free throw line and hope for some misses. Yeah. That's another good idea. Fifty-seven point three left here in the fourth, Brookville Area High School. Elk leads Brookville 50 to 46. Luke's going to pass it in to Pete. Pete's going to go on top. He's going to drive. He's going to find Kellen Haynes outside on the edge. And that's going to be a turnover for Kellen Haynes. Wasco gets it. That was a possession that needed to produce points. Brookville turns it over instead. Luke Burton's going to foul. Lance O'Neill, who go to, goes to the line, and I want to say that he's six of eight, or maybe seven of eight from the free throw line tonight. Yeah, he's looked pretty good from the. Probably not the guy you want to foul, but in some straight. instances you have no choice. For as much as we want to foul certain people, Elk wants the ball in certain people's hands. And you can't have it your way all the time. 51-46, O'Neill knocks down the first, 35.7 left. O'Neill knocks down both, it's 
33 to go. Kellen Hanks is going to bring it up. Pass to Pete. And there's going to be another turnover. Nope. Pete's going to get it back. And it's a jump ball. And Elk County Catholic is going to get the ball with 25 seconds to go. The Brookville's obviously going to play a press here. This is the Wasco. Jack Pete's going to pick up a foul here, and they're going to send Will Wartman to the line. Elk leads 52-46. We're under 20 seconds here left to play. Wortman knocks down the front end of his two free throws. The Elk County lead grows to seven with 19 and a half left to play. Wortman's two for two, it's 54-46. Keynes is gonna bring it up for the Raiders. And Cornball's gonna shoot a deep three. It's gonna get the short. Pete's gonna get it back. And it's going to be Brookfield's ball. He's going to hit it off his Willa Wortman's leg, seems to be. And Kelton is going to bring it up. Five seconds left. He's going to jack up three, and he's not going to get it to go. That's your final from Brookville Area High School. Elk County defeats Brookville 54-46. Stay tuned with us on Facebook. We'll be continuing coverage of both the Brookville Raider basketball team as well as the Lady Raiders when we get a chance. Thank you again to our sponsors. And again, you're listening and watching Raiders Sports.